Vital Community, this is Tommy in North Carolina, and I posted on the YouTube uh, Facebook group uh, about this, and so as promised, here is a video about uh, a lot of records that I won in an estate auction. Uh, and so I didn't get nearly probably the things that I wanted. Uh, but I got, I got some gems and I'm going to share them with you guys. It's going to be a two part video. This is part one. So, uh, if you're watching these out of order, uh, and you're watching part two, this is the first one. So welcome. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, this was a local estate auction. Uh, and I don't know if you guys can see that. But uh, I found this uh, on the counter at uh, Harvest Records, uh, a store that I go to there in Asheville, and um, was looking at it, and um, it was in their stack of stuff at their counter, uh, and it's this company, Bill Ramsey uh, and Associates, uh, who do estate auctions, and this was the flyer, and uh, of course I asked the guy, or whoever was checking me out that day, can I, can I take this? Yeah, sure, go ahead. So I did, and uh, started inspecting it. And so it was a sale that ran, it began last week, Tuesday, March 20th. It ended uh, yesterday at 6 p.m. Um, and it was the uh, collection from the estate of the late Mrs. Ross. And it was here in my, in my hometown, rare vintage LP collection, that caught my eyes. Uh, to be sold in small groups or collections, approximately 10,000 uh, LP collection. There were 150 lots, uh, including promos, early first pressings, club editions, box sets, audio file records, uh, most in very good to near mint condition, jazz, rock, blues, male, female, vocal, electronic, classical. Um, artists include Beatles, Rolling Stones, Miles Davis, Coltrane, Grateful Dead, Pink Floyd, you know, all the big, plus vintage stereo equipment. So anyway, um... Shown by appointment only. I never got time to go by there and look at it, but I looked online and uh, saw kind of got an overview of what they had and uh, was pretty impressed. Uh, and there were some great lots that, and they they broke it up really well. Uh, there was uh, you know twenty Beatles LPs. Uh, there was some solo Beatles LPs. Um, there was one that I was actually uh, trying to get. Uh, it was a solo Beatles LPs, and it had the thing is. You could have bought uh, some of these records and and really had a nice um, a nice store stock, uh, and I'm sure that's who bought them. I'm hoping that the guys at Harvest uh, bought uh, won a few of these uh, because I'd like to see some of this stuff trickle into the stores. So it's going to be interesting for the next few months to see this stuff uh, start to show up in some of the shops that I go to. Uh, and I hope it does, because there was some really good stuff. The problem is the bidding, I'm, I'm not uh, extremely wealthy, so the bidding really got um, kind of, it, it, I mean, let me say this. For what, whoever bought, or whoever won the, the lots that they did, they got some great stuff. Um, like I said, there was a lot of uh, Beatles like three blue albums, um, you know, just, just a ton of really good stuff. Uh, and, you know, I think the bidding on that got probably to about 150 bucks. There was, uh, there was Leonard Cohen, there was a Leonard Cohen lot, there was a Neil Young lot. I mean, all the major artists that you can think of that collectors would be interested in. But uh, the bidding just got way high. There was some great soul uh, in R&B, jazz, classical, uh, I probably could have had my my pick of the classical lots, um, but and, and I'm sure there was great stuff in there. But there was one, and, and of course there were photos online. I was looking, and um, and and this particular lot caught my eye, and I I, I was watching, and I had bid on a couple of things, um, but this particular lot it was 37 LPs, and I went in for 40 bucks. Uh, so after the fees and everything, $46 for for the lot, and a buck 25 a record, roughly. Uh, and so I felt like I came out pretty good, and I'm going to share it with you guys. I picked it up today, and I'm going to share it with you guys. 
Now, some of these I've inspected and some of them I haven't. Uh, the ones that I've inspected look really good. So as far as condition, uh, they're, they're in pretty great shape. And uh, I got them in alphabetical order, so I'm not putting them in any uh, order of import or anything. And uh, the first couple, and, and we'll just get right to it, because I know that's what you guys came here to see anyway. Um, so the first one, uh, Peter Allen, uh, by coastal uh, I don't know anything about this guy. This actually, and funny enough, just looking at it, this is a still sealed copy. Um, from what I understand, he's kind of a Barry Manilow-like artist. I think he co-wrote Arthur's theme, the Christopher Cross. So I'm not expecting great things. This is 1980 on A&M Records. Not expecting great things from this, and it may not be a keeper for me. But um, definitely, you know, whatever. Another Peter Allen... Uh, this one is not sealed. Um, this is... Uh, Peter Allen is a terrific performer. His energy level is atomic. His personality unaffectedly, unaffectedly attractive. His voice ingratiatingly individual. His music superb. And on top of all this, he has talent. Clive Barnes in New York Post. Not the boy next door. is entertainment event of the year. That's a terrible cover. I'm sorry. I don't know uh, if there's any Peter Allen fans out there. Um, that's just awful. This is a promo copy. I just realized that. But, uh, I don't have high hopes for that. But, anyway. Like I said, there, there are no, um, there are no grails or any, like, there's not going to be any revelations here. But I feel like for a buck twenty-five a record, I came out pretty good. Uh, Chuck Berry, The London Sessions. Uh, something that I did not have. Uh, being a fan of Chuck, this is on the chess label. Um, you know, the record looks really good. I'm not going to pull all these out because there's, you know, just so many. I want to get through them. But um, but you can tell by the jacket. And they put a sticker on here, very good. So I don't know if, who graded these. I'm not sure. But the ones I looked at looked pretty good. Uh, Jackson Brown, The Pretender, uh, Near Mint, uh, you know. And, well, this one's in a, in a bag. So I was going to say this may be... I don't think it's still sealed. Either way. Um, this is an album I didn't have. So, so yeah, I mean, cool. Uh, I've seen it at a couple of thrifts and passed it up. So, you know, one that I was really glad to get my hands on. Here's another one. Uh, Late for the Sky. Uh, another Jackson Brown. Very popular, I, I understand. I mean, you know, I... You know, Jackson Brown's one of those artists. These are records that I'm sure I will will enjoy. Um, so glad to have them. And then this one, uh, Jackson Brown, For Every Man. So uh, really, really nice. Um, this has got some favorites like These Days, uh, Take It Easy. Uh, so, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of these songs. Of course, Jackson Brown had a lot of hits. This is one that I may or may not have. I know I had a sealed copy at one point, Eric Clapton's Backless. Uh, I may have a copy of this in my collection. I don't know. Like I said, some of these I knew that I had, but I, I went ahead and, and, like I said, for a buck twenty-five. So uh, maybe selling some of these guys off, making my money back. They may be free by the end of that. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Ry Cooter, Borderline. This is still sealed. Um, so that's cool. Um, record I didn't have. Uh, Bop Till You Drop. Um, another Ry Cooter record. So, this one is not, uh, sealed, but, uh, in good shape. A favorite of mine that I, that I talked about, or, or will be talking about on an upcoming edition of, uh, Daily Records, my other channel. So, there's the plug for that. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Daily Records, please... There's a link in the box in my up, up upstairs in my in my header up there. Uh, go and 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 check out Daily Records. I do a different record every day, but one of the best debut albums ever, Marshall Crenshaw. Uh, I already have a copy of this, so this is a second copy. But you know, great record. Another one that I have, and I, I think I talked about this on Daily Records, the David Crosby, uh, if I can only remember my name, his uh, solo album. Uh, this one's in great shape. It's not a Monarch pressing. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a Presswell, I believe. I uh, know it's a Columbia, but it's a CRC, so it's a it's a Record Club edition. Uh, but yeah, really clean, really nice, um, cool, cool record to have. John Hyatt, Riding with the King. Uh, I'm not familiar with this record, unfortunately. I know this is an '80s '80s record produced by Nick Lowe. 
So I am uh, I'm curious about about it. I'm, I imagine it's probably a decent record. Um, so a cool one to have. This is one that caught my eye when I was looking at the photos online. Uh, Buddy Holly. This is um, the Decca a rock and roll collection, which I think is a, a reissue of an earlier uh, Decca compilation, double record set, but uh, kind of cool. Uh, you know, I, I dig Buddy Holly, so. Um, you know, this is in great shape, so, so, yeah. This is a record I do have, um, John Cougar Mellencamp Scarecrow. I, I do happen to like this record quite a bit, uh, but, uh, yeah, this is, um, I haven't looked at it yet, but, um, uh, but, I mean, I do have a copy, so that one will probably be a sale or giveaway, I don't know. Now, this is one I was quite interested in. Roy Orbison's Mystery Girl, uh, mainly because of the Jeff Lynne involvement, but also, you know, Mike Campbell, uh, Elvis Costello, T-Bone Burnett. But the interesting thing about this is it's caught my eye in, the, in looking at the photos online, and I will pull this one out to show you guys, and so I don't know what this is going to be. It's in great shape, but it is a Hungarian import. <laughs> so who has a Hungarian Roy Orbison album. It's in great shape. I just don't know what the quality is going to be. And so I'm a little, I don't know, I won't say disappointed because this is an album that, I, that I've that i been looking at for a while. I know they're out there for relatively inexpensive uh, prices. But at the same time, you know, I don't know about a Hungarian. It could be like a sixth generation copy. I You know, it's in great shape. I'll spin it and see see what I got. Uh, this is one that caught my eye in the stack. Uh, Graham Parker, uh, Heat Treatment, The Rumor, Graham Parker and The Rumor. So really, really stoked to have these on the Mercury label. I've not looked at the vinyl itself, but, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 you know, good stuff. So like I said, th these are some of the ones that caught my eye. Um, Hal and Wynn, another, another Graham Parker here. So Graham Parker fans... You know, and these are these are albums I did not have, so very cool to have them. Graham Parker again, uh, the real McCall. So these are these are records that I'm definitely uh, stoked about about adding to the collection and, and anxious to spin. Um, and finally, uh, the Graham Parker uh, squeezing out sparks. Graham Parker and the rumor. So. Records that I'm, I'm totally, uh, totally cool with having added to the to the collection, and so that's going to end part one uh, for this, and, and we're going to pick up with part two where I go through the next half of them. But uh, for a buck twenty five, again, uh, you know, really, really glad to glad to to find these right here in my hometown, I'm practically around the corner from my house, which is just. Crazy, and I guess that leads to, um, you know, when I went into the house, it's in a really nice neighborhood, and was led downstairs to the basement, uh, shelves of records, uh, you know, they had the lot separated all on tables, my eyes got this big because, you know, actually physically seeing, like, stacks of Led Zeppelin records and stacks of Beatles records, um, you know, that stuff just, you know, I get jittery, probably like most collectors probably would. I don't do a lot of estate sales, uh, and things like that. I'm not experienced at it. So this was, this was my first one. Uh, and it just made me think that, uh, and, and this may have crossed some of your minds as well. Is this going to be my family, you know, in a few years when, when my health finally declines or whatever, uh, you know, where are the, all these records going to go? I mean, that's not going to stop me from, from buying them or, 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 or looking because that's, that's part of the fun. But I keep amassing the, these, this collection of stuff and I wonder to myself, you know, I, I don't know Mrs. Ross, uh, you know, but obviously whoever they, I mean, this, this person had multiple turntables, VPI machines, um, you know, the, these records were well loved and taken care of. I, I'm showing to the, showing them to you as I as I got them. They were bagged. I mean, this is somebody that that took care of of records. Um, and so it just uh, just made me got the wheels to turn in. I know that's been kind of a discussion here. When what's what's too much? 
so on and so forth. I mean, what's going to become of this? Am I just going to sell all of this off one day and, and travel the world? Maybe, perhaps that that would be kind of fun. But um, or start over again, you know, buy you know one of these collections like this because there's a lot of great stuff in there. But um, you know, really, really uh, glad to get what I got. And and so tune in to part two. Uh, which I'm going to upload right after this one. So you're not going to have to wait several days uh, and tune into that and see the second half of the records that I got from this estate sale. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Uh, I'd like to get 365 subscribers by, by the end of April. Uh, and so that would be kind of fun because that will put me a subscriber a day for the whole year. It'd be my first year uh, being in the vinyl community which has been great. I've, I've loved meeting you guys. I've made some friends and, and that is so cool. Uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, so that, that's, that's, that's great. Um, and so thanks to everyone that's been commenting and sharing, check out the other channel. Um, there's been a different record every day this year. So, um, we're chugging right along with that. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's Tommy Burton seven five. Uh, and I usually will show what I'm spinning on there. And, uh, so stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching.